It is my first attempt to make a film on my new organized uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I hope that it uh, will make our conversatorium more vivid, more um, open for new technologies uh, but of course uh, for me uh, the most uh, important still is the traditional way of of teaching it means uh, uh, reading commenting uh, writings uh, and uh, having a discussion during our uh, online time on Zoom. But it is uh, well to to try a new possibilities which we have. A colleague of mine who is uh, very good in new technologies uh, technologies encouraged me to to make this new channel and said that it would be good to send students, uh, let us say, 10-15 minutes before. Uh, our class so that uh, you can have the first uh, glimpse of what uh, our meeting will be about and the purpose of this 10-15 um, uh, minutes is exactly this the introduction to to the real class uh, so uh, what I would like to have uh, we will see if this 15 minutes we will use as your free time uh, or we will end our uh, conversatorium earlier. We, we can decide uh, these small details next week. Uh, so, Adrem, uh, what uh, I would like to discuss today is uh, uh, the very simple question why post secularism is worth it to spend our semester discussing this uh, or perhaps uh, it is a waste of time which could be invested in uh, more useful topics uh, but me uh, proposing this course and you choosing it decided uh, nevertheless to try uh, to explore this new field of uh, research. Uh, I put on the platform uh, which uh, you have uh, available uh, connected with your Pusos uh, address. Uh, I put my own texts and uh, so it is easy for me to speak about since I wrote it uh, and uh, you can see the difference or similarities between the written text and oral presentation of this text and the title of my text is The Challenge of Post-Secularism this is a written text but uh, originally was presented uh, two years ago at the conference in Prague uh, and the conference uh, international conference dedicated to philosophy of religion and it was was my first uh, uh, so to say international um, confrontation of ideas with different people. Some agreed with me, some challenged me. So after uh, discussions, uh, after exchange of some emails, one of the, of the journal proposed me to, to public it, to publish it. So now you have in printed form. And uh, uh, you will see that uh, I include in my uh, perception of um, uh, this new phenomenon uh, also my uh, 
kind of my life uh, experience. Uh, particular, I refer to a book uh, which I published uh, almost 20 years ago in 2002, entitled uh, What We Have in Common, uh, the dialogue between uh, believers and non-believers. And I'm very proud that uh, Leszek Kowakowski, late Leszek Kowakowski, wrote uh, an introductory essay to, to this collection of uh, different texts, uh, interviews uh, published in Polish. Uh, and uh, uh, it was, without knowing it, it was my first adventure with uh, post-secularism, although I was not using at the time, I was not aware that already in the field of sociology, of religion, or in philosophy, this term was functioning. In fact, it's, uh, if you remember, I mentioned the, an essay of uh, Jürgen Habermas written exactly at the beginning of the uh, 21st uh, century in 2001. Uh, after uh, after shock of uh, 9/11, uh, so uh, it was a kind of zeitgeist in in Germany, Habermas in Poland, uh, many believers and non-believers were trying to find a common ground. In Italy, also was um, a similar uh, pu publication. Uh, Printed uh, five years earlier, if I remember exactly, 1996. It was exchange of letters between a Catholic uh, here uh, cardinal Carlo Maria Martini and the uh, well-known uh, writer Umberto Eco. Mm, they also tried to find a common ground. Uh, in Italian, it was entitled "In che cosa crede chi non crede," uh, in uh, what believe uh, someone who don't believe. So again, uh, you see, uh, it was a lot of of uh, similar experiences, research, and um, for me, it was uh, interesting to to collect. Uh, all these uh, voices in um, in this essay entitled uh, the challenge of post-secularism means not threat not danger but exactly a, a kind of uh, challenge yes that you take a, a new idea as something which enrich um, your way of thinking perhaps changed uh, but not radically just enriched, you discover new new paths, you discover new people who are not uh, your opponents, enemies, but friends uh, who could uh, help you in discover, I don't know, the way how to reconcile uh, people who are polarized between one another. Um, so I thought that uh, in this meeting uh, you can, uh, first of all, I hope that you will have time and and uh, be patient enough to, to read my text and to articulate your own uh, impression or your own fresh ideas, because I think that sometimes uh, exactly a fresh mind, not contaminated by too many readings, uh, is um, most fruitful in um, articulating uh, uh, new opinions. And uh, perhaps uh, these new opinions could be uh, challenging my own opinion, uh, but also uh, could uh, be enriching, right? That I listening to you, I can discover that perhaps uh, things which were uh, obvious for me or for those who, who, who wrote about uh, are for you uh, completely 
uh, senseless, uh, non-relevant, etc. So please be really creative, imaginative. Don't hesitate to to criticize uh, me or the position which I mentioned in my essay. Uh, because this is the sense of, of, of this course, right? That we are learning from one another. Uh, we are not uh, uh, inhibited by any restrictions. The research, uh, freedom of research is the, the main value at the university. So also in this field, when uh, two apparently opposite uh, worldviews, like uh, religious one and the secular one, uh, could be in the constant uh, and mutually un enriching uh, uh, exchange, uh, dialogue, uh, uh, conversation. Um, uh, this is one of the reasons why I uh, choose uh, this way of approaching different opinions, not um, fighting against uh, differences, but trying to understand them. Uh, as you well know, uh, in two weeks, uh, exactly on the beginning of November, 3rd of November, we will have a presidential election in the US and uh, I just saw uh, the most recent results of uh, Pew um, Research Center where you have a very interesting comparison between different groups uh, supporting both candidates and uh, what is surprising that for example uh, Catholics are almost 50-50 divided, 52% uh, if I am not wrong. Perhaps I will send you also this um, uh, recent res uh, results uh, because it's interesting uh, and perhaps in two weeks we can make a break from our program just uh, reflect upon a uh, dynamic of uh, this election. So, as I said, Catholics are divided, white Catholics are divided, uh, white uh, Protestant evangelicals are supporting heavily uh, uh, President Trump, 78% are for him and 20-something again uh, for Biden. Uh, and interesting that, for example, atheists, 80% are for Biden and only 10% for Trump. So it will be, of course, one of the topic in our um, course uh, when we will face the problem of post-secularism and politics. But since uh, this is so hot in this uh, weeks, so perhaps it uh, makes sense that we will include also our reading and I'm sure that you are following, I don't know, Twitter, Facebook and all possible social media where this topic is also present. And uh, I think on Monday we will have also a possibility to, to attend the conference or lecture by well-known um, American journalist and professor of journalism, um, Jennifer Thompson. So perhaps uh, I will try to attend it also. Uh, so it will be also a possibility to, to discuss with her and to include in our course also this. So as you see, uh, we can uh, spend uh, a good time uh, to reflect upon implications of this new way of thinking about our uh, global reality. And of course, our focus is uh, on the United States. And uh, I really hope uh, that our conversation, exchange of opinions, your comments will bring us um, into uh, better understanding 
uh, of the moment in which we are uh, now. So see you uh, and have a fruitful reflection on why it's worth it to discuss, to reflect upon post-secularism.